Okay, hello everyone. My name is Yu Seok Jeon from Purdue University. And today, I'm going to introduce our uh, the current research, the hex type, efficient detection of type confusion errors for C++. Uh, this is the joint work with Korean Biz work, Scott Carr, and my co-advisor, Byung Young Lee and Matthias Payer. So, what is the, our research motivation? As you know, C++ is a popular programming language uh, because of its modularity and performance. However, type confusion bugs are emerging artifacts to compromise C++ application. And also, existing sanitizer are incomplete and impractical because of its low coverage and high, high overhead. So, oh. <laughs> Before going to the detail, um, I'm going to introduce what is the type confusion problem. So let's assume that there are three types, and the shape, the parent, has uh, two uh, the child types, square and triangle. And type confusion problems occur during the type casting. So, as you know, upcasting from a derived class to each parent class, this is always safe. However, downcast from a parent class to a derived class, it might make a problem. For example, uh, let's assume that there are two uh, types, and this is the each declaration, and child pointer, child type additionally has a uh, one integer value. And if this uh, type uh, allocate into the memory, each memory layout will be like this. And of course, each type pointer can indicate exact same type range, like this. The problem is here. If uh, we allocate uh, if the parent object is allocated like this, and if uh, this object is uh, in, uh, pointed by the parent uh, child pointer after the typecasting uh, operation, and since the child pointer uh, can point the large area beyond the parent object, so it can access the unexpected area. So this is the uh, type confusion problem. So it occurs the undefined behavior. So if there is uh, some code to override this unexpected area, so if there is uh, some important information like vtable pointer, so this memory confusion is uh, the critical problem. So this is the type confusion problem. So there are two type confusion related casting operators. First, uh, in the case of the static cast, they just check the relationship between the source type and the destination type. But they didn't check the detailed information like whether uh, this is the up casting or the down casting. So, well, the type confusion problem. So this is not solution for uh, the type type confusion problem. And in the case of the dynamic cast, it can be the solution uh, for the type confusion problem. Uh, it check the type casting during runtime using RTTI information. However, it has uh, two kinds of the limitation. First, uh, RTTI information is only uh, located in the polymorphic class. So it means that dynamic cast cannot verify type casting uh, between the non-polymorphic class. And additionally, passing RTTI information is very expensive. So performance critical applications like the Firefox, they do not use dynamic cast. So, uh, now I'm going to introduce our hexatype design in order to solve this type confusion problem. So 
hexatype, uh, our project is a compile-based solution. So we take the source code and we modified LLVM compiler. So in the crank level, we try to find all type casting operation and we insert the instrumentation in order to verify uh, this typecasting operation. Then, in order to verify uh, this typecasting, uh, we need uh, two pieces of information. First, uh, we need uh, uh, the object uh, type information, uh, which is pointed by source pointer of casting operation. So in order to that, we have to trace uh, the object allocation and deallocation. So we create two paths in the LLVM. So and then we insert the instrumentation all object allocation and deallocation site. And in order to check the relationship between source and destination type, uh, we need uh, the type hierarchy information. So uh, the in our LLVM path, we create the type hierarchy information. So we also create runtime library in order to handle our instrumentation. So the final result will be our hex type hardened binary. <coughs> so uh, now we have seen the high level design of our hex type. So now I'm going to introduce a more detailed example how our uh, project works. So if, if this code is compiled by our hex type, we will insert the instrumentation this the casting operation side. Then this instrumentation will call our runtime library during runtime. Uh, and in order to verify this cast, we need uh, two pieces of information. First, as I said before, we have to know uh, the type information, uh, which is pointed by source pointer. So to do that, uh, we, we have to uh, trace uh, the object allocation and the allocation. So we insert the instrumentation like object allocation and the allocation side like this. And this instrumentation will update our object to time mapping table uh, during the run time. So using this object to time mapping table during the run time, uh, we can get the, the source type. Now we know source type and destination type. The second step, we have to uh, the check the each relationship. So uh, we use the type relationship information. So using these two information, uh, we can verify typecasting operation like this. So this is the, the, the basic uh, the algorithm of the, our hex type. So now I'm going to introduce our optimization algorithm. This is because uh, the performance is a very critical factor for the type confusion uh, detection detector. So in the next slide, uh, I'm going to discuss the previous solutions and our uh, algorithm. Uh, I introduced a previous solution and our, uh, our, our algorithm. So in the case of the selective object tracing, uh, cable and type set, they used uh, the selective object tracing already. Uh, however, they used some function level uh, object tracing for stack object. But currently, uh, the performance uh, is not efficient. So we propose new, uh, more fine-grained selective object tracing algorithm. And then in the case of the casting replacing, uh, as I said before, the dynamic casting uh, is very expensive. So our algorithm is we replacing uh, we replace uh, expensive dynamic cast 
into the, our first check. And in the case of the compile time verification, um, basically, we have to verify the uh, typecasting during the runtime. However, we found some pattern that we can verify typecasting during compile time in order to reduce the runtime uh, overhead. And uh, the last hour optimization is we propose the new data structure for object tracing. In the case of the UVSEN, they use the uh, RTTI information in the polymorphic class, but uh, passing the RTTI information is uh, very expensive. And in the case of the cable, they use the shadow memory for uh, heap object tracing, and then they also use the red black tree for a uh, core thread red black tree for uh, heap uh, stack object and then global object tracing. And in the case of the type send, they use the shadow memory for all uh, object. Uh, however, uh, shadow memory, uh, this uh, scheme has uh, some limitations, like they did not delete the outdated data from the table, and also, uh, the, as you know, the shadow memory scheme basically used the high memory than non-shadow memory scheme. So we propose the new data structure, the combination of hash map and red black tree. So, uh, uh, now I'm going to introduce how uh, our new data structure, uh, object uh, time map works. How? So, uh, let's just assume that uh, there is a one object allocated, and using the address address of each object and our hash map, uh, we can calculate a, each index and uh, we check the, the slot, and if there is, uh, the slot is empty, we edit the information directly into the this slot. This is the past path. And if there is uh, another object allocation, and if the, uh, there is a collision, at that time, we insert the object allocation information into the slow path. Uh, more specifically, Per entry, a red black tree. The basically, the red black tree is an inefficient data structure. So we allocate and manage the red black tree as a per entry red black tree. So we uh, think that uh, so we always maintain very few objects in the red black tree. So this is the detailed design of the our object time map. So. Uh, in the case of the past path slot, we save the uh, address of the allocated uh, object, and then we also save the type information as a hash value, and we also save the address of the type relationship information. And as I said before, if there is a collision, uh, we edit this information, into the poor and true red black tree. So this is the evaluation result uh, about the, our data structure using the spec CPU and Firefox. And this is the allocated uh, object uh, information during the evaluation. So M is uh, the million. So as you can see, during the update and the lookup, to the, our object time map, and almost all cases we use the, the past pass, which has uh, the time complexity of the big O of one. So using this, our object tracing, uh, using this, our new data structure, we can reduce the, uh, the object tracing overhead. And this is the, our second optimization algorithm. The basic idea is that we only trace typecasting-related objects. 
So we call this as a, a unsaved object. And on the other hand, the saved object, which is uh, related, which will not used for, which will not never used for casting. In this case, we don't need to trace this saved object. So I'll show how we can get the, this uh, unsaved the object set. So for example, uh, it, in this code, type B uh, will be used for the typecasting. So we have to trace this uh, object. However, the, the type C uh, will not used for the typecasting. So uh, we extract this information as an uh, unsaved ob object type set, and we have to consider some special case. So all types pointer can indicate each or uh, the children types. This is already safe. So we also consider the, this case. So again, we extend our object type set again like this. So this is the, our algorithm. So using this algorithm, uh, this is the, our evaluation result using the spec CPU benchmark and Firefox. And this is the uh, allocated object uh, during the evaluation. So we, we can distinguish the safety object like this. So for example, uh, in the case of the suplex, if we only trace 3% of the object, we can verify all typecasting in this program. So using this algorithm, we also decrease the, the overhead of uh, overhead for uh, object tracing. And this is our third uh, optimization. So as I said before, uh, the dynamic cast is very expensive. So the idea is uh, we we replace dynamic cast into the our past check. So we also evaluate uh, our algorithm using the spec benchmark. So uh, for example, the deal, they has a, a, a large number of the dynamic cast, more than uh, 200 million. So after replacing uh, this dynamic cast, this dynamic cast into the uh, our test check, we can reduce the overhead by 4%. Okay, and then this is the, our last optimization, compile time verification. So basically, we have to verify typecasting during runtime. This is because we don't know the real type, which, will be, uh, which is the pointed by source pointer of casting operation. However, we found some patterns that if the local variable will be directly used for uh, the static cast like this, and then if there is a local variable, and then all store variable also local variable, in this case, using some uh, simple data flow analysis, we can uh, decide the source type information during compile time. So, uh, we don't need to insert the instrumentation in order to verify typecasting during runtime. So we can reduce the overhead also. So using this alg algorithm, uh, this is the evaluation result. In the case of the spec, uh, we test, uh, test the, the, our performance using the spec benchmark and Firefox. And X1 uh, is the comparison with the cable, and X2 is the comparison with the typeset. And uh, in the case of the spec benchmark, we can uh, reduce the overhead uh, almost the, the by factor of the 33. And the, in the case of the Firefox, but we have a, a similar um, overhead. This is because uh, we, in order to increase the coverage, 
uh, we have to trace the more object than previous works. In the next slide, uh, I'm going to introduce how we can increase the coverage. This is because the coverage is uh, also a critical factor for type confusion detector. So the previous works, they still has a low coverage. Uh, for example, in the spec, they only cover almost, uh, 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 almost 14 percent of the typecasting. This is because they assume that an object are allocated individually, like the using malloc and the C++ operator new. However, we found new patterns that uh, many applications uh, create the large memory pool, then if they allocate the object, they reuse the memory from the pre-allocated pool using the placement new and reinterpret So we handle this case so we can increase the coverage like this. So in the case of the spec benchmark, uh, we can, uh, now we can handle almost all case like this. And then in the case of the Firefox, we can increase the coverage uh, and most uh, the by factor of the seven. And we also find a new vulnerability using uh, our detector. So we found four vulnerability in the QT and approach. So these vulnerability are confirmed and patched by the developers. So uh, for example, uh, in the case of the Apache, Apache Borg, we find uh, type confusion that dumb, in, dumb text input object uh, was pointed by dumb elementary input uh, after the type casting. So this is the type confusion problem because DOM, in, DOM text input is not parent of the DOM text input. And additionally, DOM text input uh, was, is allocated from the memory pool using the placement new. It means that uh, using uh, the previous tool cannot detect this box. And in the case of the Qt box, uh, we find the box that QMAP node base uh, is pointed by QMAP node, which is not each parent pointer, parent type. So this is also type confusion work. So uh, our hexa type can uh, find uh, this work like this. So to wrap up, in order to uh, overcome the previous solutions, we propose the hexa type which increase the detection coverage and reduce the overhead using the several new optimizations. And we also discovered four new type confusion blocks. And our prototype is currently released, so you can check uh, the, our prototype at this link. So thank you very much. And are there any comments and questions? Hey. Hi, Miguel Neves from New Effort JS in Brazil. Uh, nice talk. Uh, quick question. Um, from the user point of view, what is the required set of inputs to your system? It's only the source code, or do you also require it to specify some sort of valid type map or something like that? Oh, I'm sorry, could you uh, ask the question more slowly? Yeah, sure. Uh, what is the set of required inputs to your system from the user point of view? I mean, it's just only the source code, the program, or it also requires it to specify something like the set of allowed type mappings or something like that. Oh, so did you ask the, what is the requirement to modify typecasting, would you like? Uh, actually, what does the user need to, in, to provide this input to your system? I mean, it's only the source code? Oh, yes, yeah, so we, we only need a source code. So, uh, and then this source code will be compiled by uh, our uh, the uh, LLVM 
optimize the error by our LLVM, modify the LLVM, and then yeah, we can check the typecasting. So Something beyond that or only that? Only that. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Hong Yu from UTSA. Uh, so my question is, you talked about the dynamic cast and the static cast, but how about the casting is implicit, not the explicit? Uh, you mean, did you, did you ask the C-style C type? Yeah, cast? yeah. Oh, and in the case of the C-style casting, uh, and, and if you see the the standard of the C++, uh, C style typecasting, uh, if C style casting uh, will be compiled uh, with the C++, uh, it will be changed first const cast and the second static cast and then uh, finally it uh, changed for the uh, lint split cast. So uh, in the explicit cast, uh, you mean the C style cast first uh, we, we also consider, next time we also check the C style cast because uh, it will be changed for the static cast or lint free cast. So if you check the standard, uh, you can uh, understand my uh, uh, answer. So, Did but, I answer your question? Yes, yeah, so, but if in the source code, I, I don't use a dynamic best cast. That, that's how, how do you handle that? Uh, pardon? Uh, if I don't use the uh, static dash dynamic uh, casting and uh, all the static dash cast to cast the uh, one object to another object. Uh, uh, if you use the system static cast, uh, our mm -hmm. our program can detect this, can modify uh, the the type case. Although you did not use the dynamic cast or static cast. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you.